So before we get started, I want to play a little video type of audio thing a person sent me named Tanya Abel. Okay. It's uh, actually a, uh, a recruiting program in South Africa. Let's just listen to this. The United States trucking industry seeks to recruit truck drivers from South Africa. Now, a shortage of truckers across the U.S. has become so severe, companies are trying to bring in drivers from abroad. The USA says its economy will need about 100,000 drivers by 2023. Now, will this create more job opportunities for South African drivers, or will it result in a shortage for the South African industry? So that was a, a video that uh, a news station, I guess this station is... BE9 IWIC or something like that in South Africa. And apparently there's a recruiting campaign going on in South Africa to recruit truck drivers, which, you know, it, it, they're trying to solve the driver shortage in, in the United States here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I actually I talked to a company about this. I, I was actually amazed. You know, and, and there's hardly any any views on that video. This is legit. Um, and I asked uh, a, a director at a company, a big company, and he said to me, he said, we're not doing it. He said, it's a lot of red tape to try to, you know, you have to get somebody to get a visa. Mm -hmm. They have to get trained properly. Um, I, I don't think that they can be trained in another country. They have to actually, when they come here, into the United States, they have to go to our CDL school. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've been in recruiting. I've been in, in operations. I've been in everything. And, um, and I remember, you know, talking to drivers that are in other countries that have 20 years experience and the United States accepts nothing as far as their experience, because we would have to call their company in another com in another country to verify the actual experience. So, you know, not calling anybody liars, but how would you truly verify somebody's trucking experience in another country except by taking their word? You can't. Well, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, you know, DOT regulations make us use DOT numbers and other ways of proof of of the business being legitimately compliant companies. Exactly. Yeah. With the drug and alcohol and all. And if you're dealing with companies that are you know, out of the United States, you're running into them not being compliant with DOT, you know, so I, I would see how it would be very difficult for, for that to be a prospective type of well, I endeavor. Mean, well, <laughs> well, it's, it's happening. So I don't know. I, I imagine it's going to piss a lot of people off. I think it's probably yes. It, it doesn't <laughs> piss me off. If you think about it, right? If you if you think about one thing, um, we've had especially the last year and a half, and I've interviewed drivers. You know that, that you know drivers talk to us all the time, and I've inter I've talked to drivers that are still sitting at home, right now sitting at home collecting unemployment because their benefits haven't. Um, left, and I guess September is supposedly the cutoff, but now with this new coronavirus thing coming back again, I oh gosh, I know. Well, the bottom line is there's there's truck drivers. I mean, I've talked to a couple lately that literally have been out of work for a year, almost two years, a year and a half since the COVID started last year, and they're they're collecting unemployment. So, and again, I'm not here to knock them, but. These trucking companies that need to get freight moved, there's so much stuff behind right now in the United. You, you know that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Supplies. They're, they're, it's it's horribly backed up with with people not getting. I mean, we were at the grocery store and they're saying that they, the grocery store is saying we cannot get truck drivers to pull our freight in. Right. Pepsi was one of them. Yeah, even. I was going to say you you talked to a guy at Publix the other mm -hmm. day that worked there because mm -hmm. you were looking for a product and they said well, we just. It's not that we don't have it. We just might not be able to get it. Right. Right. They can't get it anymore because the companies can't get the drivers to supply it to for transport. They, they're they finally getting the workers in there or it's one of those companies that don't use um, like they might be more machine related that but they can't get the product that they're making to the stores that need to that need it. So so the, my whole point is go back to this news New, this this news break here that we just we just found mm -hmm. um, that was sent to us by Miss Tanya Abel. Um, 
can do you, can you blame trucking companies for wanting like if you let's say you have a thousand trucks, right? Now the, the big ones are the ones that really get hurt. Mm-hmm. Let's say you have a thousand trucks, and let's say thirty percent of your truck your fleet is down right now because people are sitting at home not working. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got to get your you. Why should you go out of business for because of people that don't want to come to work? Right. Okay. Why Why should you be? And see, a lot of people don't realize how many people are still. And it's not just the trucking industry. It's it's, it's a, all over. Yeah. Exactly. People are sitting at home, not working. Blah 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 blah. Well, guess what? If if I'm the business owner, I'm going to do what I can. And I will tell you what, this is another another justification for autonomous trucks. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not joking. No. So you you have. You have a, a guy with a billion dollars and he's paying on, you know, 30% of his fleet to sit. That means his profit is down. He's going to find a way to make it happen. And recruiting in Africa right now is, is one of those ways that they're starting. Yeah. Come to America. We can pay you to sit at home and not work, right? Well, no, I don't think that the South Africans are wanting to come. No, and, no, no. I'm not referring to them. I'm just saying because so, so many people want to come to the United States from other countries and some of them that's what they're doing they're not coming to work they're coming not to work but well i'm not talking about them i'm talking about our own people that are sitting on their ass not working exactly okay they're they're it's worse we're a lazy country well i don't think that we're a total lazy country not everyone no i mean most of the people that listen to us are actually driving and working no i think what it is is i'm 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 cutting you off trying to speak and i'm speaking half my sentences i think so you're like (laughs) you're like out there in left field I'm, i'm just like i'm irritated because it's there these people can be working and they're not and they want to use the excuses of because of covid and the companies the the drivers are going to they're not going to keep letting them get away with it they're going to lose their licenses well i i 100 agree and 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 i'll just keep going i'll say it over and over and over if if you own a business okay anybody that will bitch about this about recruiting in other countries to bring in drivers um any country or any anybody that's going to bitch about it put yourself in the place of the business owner right. here that needs drivers you would do the same exact thing if you can't get get your business going why should you go out of business because people that don't want to work well i, I agree yeah. and i would if i was a business owner i'd be doing the same thing i mean there's people out there that want to work and just because you have to go to another country to get them does not mean that you're a bad person i think because you're trying to get someone to supply for the consumer well the person that's sitting at home and refusing to go to work, when you go to the grocery store and you see half the shelves there empty, you should feel bad because you're one of the reasons why they're half empty because you're not transporting the freight. So when the little kid that wants their favorite food and you're saying, sorry, it's not on the shelf, daddy didn't help bring it. You know, I don't know what to say there. I mean, I just know that there's drivers out there that are not working and it's bad. Well, and and again, it's it's again, it's not just trucking. It's whoever wants to sit home and not be part of, you know, progress and keeping this country going. True, honestly true. and truly, I'm not saying just the trucker. Right, and 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 we know there's a lot of good truckers that are mm-hmm. working. I mean, that's not. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you to the ones that really are out there listening right now that are driving down the road. Okay, but again, it's it's a problem. It's a major problem, and. It's going to get solved one way or the other, and if it hurts the worker because he didn't want to work, then so be it. That's really what I say. It's their own decision. So, so I listened to to the to this thing, and I'm going to put the uh, video links in the um, in the story on our our, our uh, site. It'll be on Apple Podcasts and everything. If you go on and listen to it, they also talk about in the interview. Not only will, you know, is this going to, they're trying to, you know, obviously help the United States, but it's going to hurt them because they're taking their workers out of Africa, out South Africa. They need their own workers. Mm -hmm. So now the industry in South Africa is going to get hurt because there's this big campaign. I mean, you see, it's right on their national news. That's right on their, that's right on television. That, that, that interview is right on their television there in South Africa. It's not Mm -hmm. a video. It's an actual television uh, broadcast. Mm -hmm. And so here's a, here's a country now of South Africa. That's going to be impacted by their employees, their workers leaving their country to come over to ours to, to work too. I don't see them getting, you know, a couple hundred thousand workers out of there, but they could get enough, but. Again, I don't know, you know, what the process is to getting these guys hired mm-hmm. into this country is, 
But somebody figured out a way because they're talking about it on the news, and I don't know. What, I, I'm not going to name names because I don't know which big company most likely is doing it, but you have the big four, mm -hmm. okay? You have Swift, you have J.B. Hunt, you have Warner, and you have um, uh, Swift, J.B. Hunt, Sierra Warner, England. Sierra England. And uh, those four trucking companies probably have 50,000 trucks to combined. Um, you also have UPS, which is gigantic. I don't know. And FedEx, I don't know if they're recruiting. I don't know any of these companies that we just named, if they're even involved in it. But obviously, if it's on their national news over there, it's <laughs> somebody big is, is recruiting over there. Yeah, and I, I don't think that they're one of the only countries that are having people come over. I know um, other countries I've heard, too, that are that, that people are coming over to work over in the United States, you know. Yeah, well, it's no secret. I know that there's a lot of um, Russian and uh, Lithuanian and Serbian drivers that are in the United States, mm -hmm. um, Mexican drivers in the United States. Again, I don't, I don't have an issue with any any race. I can no, care we, less. we don't. I, you know, if, if we have to recruit people to keep the industry going, you know, the trucking industry can't die. No. And if 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 if, if you're sitting at home right now, and you could be working, but you're wink wink at home from the COVID. You really need to get off your ass and get out there and start driving again. I'm serious. It's just it, the it, truth. Trucking companies really need you right now. I mean, it's bad. I agree. And I think that's why it kind of got me a little frustrated in the beginning of the article. It wasn't the fact that I was upset that they were going over there to do anything. I was just bothered by the fact that, you know, these are people that we, you know, these are truck drivers and other people in the United States that are just taking such advantage out of something that's not the greatest, but they're taking advantage of it to stay home. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, when you go to the store and there's just stuff not on the shelves and they want to keep saying and using the excuses, well, the companies aren't working. No, it's not the companies that aren't working. Half of the products now... It's the workers. Exactly. Yeah, We got a lot of workers just sitting around. And I mean, that's why I said about us being a country of just a bunch of lazy because there's so many that are just... They don't want to go to work. And listen, when I'm on someone's side, you know, I'll say, hey, I'm on this person's side or mm -hmm. that person's side. Most of the time, we're just rep reporting what we're hearing and what we're seeing. Okay. We're just laying it out there for everybody. Um, I actually can see why our people are doing it. I mean, if, if you're that blind, if anybody's pissed off about the recruiting in other, in other countries, which again, I know a lot of people will be when they hear this, um, if you're pissed off about it, Put yourself, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but put yourself in the business owners in, in his space. You know, at one time he had he had trucks going down the road, and now he's got a... I know, I know some trucking companies right now that have 120 trucks, and they have literally only about 70 going down the road. They got about 50, 60 sitting against the fence. 40 to 50% of their fleets are sitting, and these are like small to mid-sized companies. You cannot... Tell me that if you were the business owner, you wouldn't do all you all you can to get your business going before you go bankrupt and lose your ass. I mean, that's what I would do. Makes you also wonder about these drivers. There's there's drivers out there that that are because it is everybody's needing them badly. They kind of get a little high and mighty, wanting to um, not accept certain types of positions driving because they're above that. You know, when you're coming from, you know, getting other people from other countries to come in and do the job that you are qualified to do, you know, and you're not doing it. Do you, do you ever see about, um, like, people that work out on farms and stuff? They'll get um, a lot of people from, like, just uh, the the in our area, in the strawberry fields and stuff like that. You'll see a lot of Cubans and a lot of other area people. Migrant workers, yeah. yeah. Working their tails off, picking the blueberries, picking the berries, hard all this workers. stuff. Very hard workers, yeah. because they're they're looking at like, hey, I'm just going to earn some money. I need to take care of my family. Where sometimes the other Floridians out there, like, I ain't going to work for that, you know, because they feel they're above it. Well, that's what I'm trying to say with these truck drivers. Some of them are like, I ain't going to work for for this amount of money or going these miles, and I am not going to go and do the Northeast. However, their attitude might be, but when you go and peel pick people from other countries over and they're like, yeah, I want to work because I need to make some money and I want to do this. And I want to, I want to have something when I get older. 
these truck drivers are going to regret all that high and mighty attitude they had in the past. Well, you know, what's really funny is what you just said is so true. And again, just telling people, some people are their own worst enemies. And there's people out there that'll say, um, there's people out there that'll say, like you said, I don't do this. I don't do that. I, I earn my right not to go to the Northeast. I've been driving five or 10 years. Well, when you go to a new company, you didn't earn your right to do anything. Okay. You're starting over there. All right. You, you can't just walk in and have their gravy runs. But really what I'm saying is, like you said, a lot of these guys are going to regret it and they're not going to have anybody but to blame mm-hmm. but themselves because yeah. you know what I mean like like you actually you just brought up a really good point you know these guys that don't want to do the northeast or they don't want to do this or they don't want to do that well now you get some guys that come over say from South Africa and they're like uh, I'll I'll take the run I don't care and now they start making more money and 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 uh all of a sudden the job market gets tighter now if it fills up and now guess what the guy that was trouble a lot and went through a lot of jobs and and sat at home and did this and did this you know what i mean that was kind of had that negativity going on he now goes to the bottom of the of the chain now here's another question i have real quick before we we move forward the most companies if you have not driven a tractor trailer 18 wheels whatever you want to classify it as some drivers think class b is is acceptable it's not go ahead after so long you are training again. You cannot go and think that you're going to get in there now. We have this pandemic for two years. They'll give you some leeway, but after that, when they know it's been all open, listen. Sorry, Charlies. <laughs> Actually, I'm so glad you, so glad you brought this up. I was talking to a trucking company two days ago, right? And um, there's a guy that applied. He he was telling me about this guy, real unruly attitude. The guy applied for a job with this company. Mm-hmm. Now listen to this. The companies are so desperate, but they can't go against their insurance. Right. And just like you said, this guy literally had like over 30 years of experience, but he has not driven. And just almost at in, th- in three years, he's got maybe two or three months of driving. That's it. And the insurance companies have a strict rule. Unless, of course, you go to some crap company that's just going to put you in their truck and you're taking a chance of even getting paid. But if you go to a good company, they have, a, they have to go by their certain rules. So what the company did was this guy wanted this job. They had this, I don't even know, so supposedly a really nice job. They offered him a job, even though he is out of the truck almost three years. But there was one stipulation. And he, he had to go with one of their... Like a trainer, but it was only to appease their insurance company. And all he had to do was go for one week. One week. And he told me, I, I can't remember the exact conversation. He told me, well, the guy got all high and mighty, got insulted. I'll never get in a truck with anybody, blah, 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 blah. Right? This is the attitude, right? Mm-hmm. But he's been sitting at home for literally, legitimately, not working nothing for almost three years. This guy's been off for like three years. And they offered to put him in a truck. Well, he's got only one other choice to go with a real crappy company. And and you know what this this director told me? He said, we had no problem with this guy's skill set. They said, we know the guy knows how to drive. After three years, he ain't going to forget how to drive. Mm -hmm. He said, that's not even a, he said, honestly, not even a question. There, we, nothing. We, you know, we know this guy's going to be a good driver with that much experience. In fact, the guy didn't have like, you know, tickets and accidents. But he has no recent experience, like you said. Um, the big reason they told me was because of, you know, every year the DOT regulations and the laws, and they, all, they keep changing. Mm-hmm. And they get stricter and stricter, the ELD mandates, all that stuff. And all they wanted to do was put him in a truck for a week or less. A week or less with another driver, okay, and just to go over the ELDs, because this guy's never had an ELD. I mm-hmm. mean, it's only been mandatory, I think, since one of 20, when it was across the board where ELDs have to, you know, be in every truck, except for, you know, a, a few exceptions. Mm-hmm. So this guy most likely never had an ELD, right? Mm-hmm. And so 
the director just wanted to get him up to speed on everything, and he copped an attitude. And and you know what the director said? I'm done with him, man. He ain't getting in here now. They He's might be done. Companies might be desperate, but they're not beyond their own. Um, I can't think of what the word is right now. The their own. Um, Okay. Standards. Yeah, yeah you know you, what I mean. You gotta help. They, they still have their standards. They're not going to hire just anybody. And the reasons DOT got so strict with so many uh, different policies like that is because of the drivers that were not very um, upstanding and would go and and just be neglectful out there driving. And each time they have to get more and more stricter because these people are, are or, or, or the ones that are, are jumping out in front of the truck so they can get hit. And, you know, all those different things that have been happening. DOT is being strict because of all those kinds of incidences to where they're trying to really actually protect the driver and, and the transportation industry a little bit more from those kind of people. Yeah. So, hey, look, again, we're not here bitching. I mean, we are bitching. <laughs> but, it, but the reason I'm bitching, if, if you really want the truth, is because it all stems back to this... this um, video that was sent to us about, you know, trucking companies recruiting in South Africa to bring drivers to the United States. Okay. It all goes back to that. Everybody's going to be pissed off, but nobody wants to take responsibility to why they have to do this. Right. So, you know, I think we said enough. Hopefully, hopefully now they said that this um, September is supposedly supposedly the cutoff where everybody has to go back to work. Okay. And, and get working again, America. Um, we'll see if it, if it happens. Um, but you know, you, you came up with some good points there. I mean, that's sincerely kudos. Thanks. All right. Hey, before we go on to some of these stories that I have here in trucking, let's, let's go ahead and, uh, I was just going to say, Hey, if you want to move up and start going further into the driving and, and, Go call J.J. Keller, become an owner-operator. Yeah, well, and, and you know, uh, if, if we're being honest, I think more truck drivers right now are becoming owner-operators. Mm-hmm. I've never seen, this is a, like an avalanche of owner-operators. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Keller has to be busy right now. They have to they're, be. They're the trucker's best friend. They help with DOT numbers. They help with DOD. They help with inspection. They help with keeping your paperwork in order. Everything. Everything you want, and it's like... Next to nothing to work with these people. And I'll tell you, truthfully, for the guy that's unorganized, J.J. Keller is is like a, a godsend. It's like a blessing to somebody that is is not is not organized. What's Keller's number, Ruth? Give it to them. 888-601-2017. And it will be tax deductible. Yeah, call J.J. Keller and uh, let him know that Talk CDL told you to come on over. Ruth Ann, we got this... Uh, Cocoon MDR app for Android and supposedly coming out here on iPhone. Um, Soon. And it may have already come out because we haven't talked to them in about a week. But the uh, um, the app, you just download it and it tracks you and it, and it, it literally dumps money. You do nothing. Create create the little account so that you can get yeah. your money. Uh, you know what? Actually, I should have told some of these drivers, write in or call us. Actually, just write in and uh, go to the TalkCDL page or go to Troy at TalkCDL.com. Or Ruth Ann at TalkCDL.com. Hmm. And uh, let us know like how that app is working. Because I already know it's doing good for all yeah, those. So we can't test it because we have iPhones. We don't have the droids. So. No, but it may be on iPhone now. I don't think it is yet because he would have shot me a message real quick. So I think it's getting really close. Okay. So anyways, but you know what's funny is the guys that have the app... They're they're collecting money, and I would like I would like to just keep getting the word out mm-hmm. to you know our trucker friends. Mm-hmm. You know, download this damn app; it's free. And and uh, I guess if you have a PayPal account, that's the best, and it just dumps the money in there. Mm-hmm. So it's a Cocoon C O C O O N M D R app for Android right now, and you can uh, try to find it also for iPhone here in the future, hopefully. Last. Last partner of ours, Ruth Ann, who, who's, who is this being brought to you by today? NCI. National Carriers. I'm, and honestly, and truly a great company. Um, just a, one of those companies that they're looking for drivers, another company that's looking for drivers. Mm-hmm. And uh, they got Southwest Regional Runs. They got, they'll take on students, lease drivers, making good money. Elite Fleet. So they, got, they, they work with drivers like you would not believe. And they have the, the coveted 
Kenworth T680. The pretty blues. It, yeah, and there's the big sleeper, APU, fridge freezer, inverter, TV mounts, writer, pet, all that crap. And to be honest with you, it's a, a great company. If I was back on the road, I 100% would be... And they have their own freight, so they don't have to worry about That's true. They absolutely are one of those companies you don't have to be bothered with brokers. Mm. Ruth Ann, what's their phone number for national carriers? 888-311-7076. Hey, and if you're in national carriers orientation and you came from Talk CDL from our, our uh, show here, make sure you mention us while you're there. Uh, I believe Rick, the uh, director over there, he said, I love it when... When somebody tells us that they heard about us on Talk CDL, yeah, which is really cool, yeah. So, all right, moving on, moving on, moving on. So, you know, there's a couple of crazy stories coming out this week in trucking, and I wanted to just kind of bring you up to a couple of them. So, check this out. Listen to this one. Okay. You ready? Ready. This is insane. Motorist faces felony charges after allegedly firing. On semi truck, Ruth Ann, how important is it not to get shot at as a trucker? Um, I would say highly important. Is it up on the high list? It's a, it's up on the high list. You know, all my driving, and I've driven every state, okay, except California. I stay, I, I almost went to Cali, but I didn't go. I literally, I was an East Coast boy. I but, drove in Cali. Okay, now listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. Have you ever been shot at in a semi truck? No, no, I have never been shot at. Period. Let alone in a semi. I've never been shot at in a semi either. And I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really give the whole story. I'll link it here in the in the, the transcripts and all. But truthfully, it doesn't say who started it. But uh, I guess a trucker called the police and he said he's being shot at by a motorist. Um, and they found the guy. His name is Bradley Skoog, S K O O G. He's fifty six. Those mid, those fifties guys, they kind of have an attitude, I think. Midlife but, crisis. Yeah, but they're like, <laughs> it's a, they're at that peak where they're just start. You know, when you're in your mid fifties, you're like, okay, I'm gonna be the old man soon here, and I'm pissed off at the world, you know. And so I don't that know. Testosterone's th- going flip. Ex- exactly, <laughs> and so it's like, okay, I'm not young anymore, and I'm and I could and I I could see my grandpa or my dad still in his seventies or eighties, and I know I'm next. So they. They're got a chip on their shoulder. Guilty. But anyways. Yeah, I was going to say, I, it sounds so but, familiar. But no, seriously, if, if I'm being honest, okay, it doesn't say who, who cut off who. It don't matter. It, 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 you're right, it doesn't matter. It should never come to pulling a gun out. But mm-hmm. anyways, the police, they, they, they had the trucker on the side of the road, and they were picking bullets out of the trailer. So at least he shot into the trailer and not the cab. Because I think about a year or two ago, we read a story where a guy had bullet holes in the cab. I, I think, and here's the thing that I don't understand if you're so, gosh, I want to say so many weird words like stupid and so forth, for shooting into a, not only a moving vehicle, but one that's carrying flammable fuel and big, huge tanks that generally when you look to the side. They're not that flammable. Are you telling me that? Diesel's not. You can shoot a hole in a diesel tank. It's not going to go off. My friends and I used to light a match and throw it in our motorcycle tanks. I'm serious. If you if you light a match and throw it in your tank real fast and put your hand over it, it goes right out. It's because of the oxygen. I'm, exactly. I understand that. But well, it's, it's still flammable. They're lead line tanks. You can shoot the tank. I, 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 think, right. I think you're being silly. Google it. See if you can you shoot a can you shoot a a, a diesel tank? It, 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 How combustible it, is diesel fuel? Okay, well here's the thing. Driving down the road. I think it will be combustible enough, considering that if it if a if a tractor hits a an object and comes to a sudden stop, it can blow up. So I would say that it's flammable enough that if you're going to shoot into it, well, I'm just saying Google it. I, I could. Be I'm going I am. I'm going to Google it right now. So here's my take on this, and and I like I like your answer also. Why is it that it comes up like as soon as I, I start typing it, how flammable it is, and it comes up with right away diesel? Really? It's because, probably because my search engines. Because it's, we're all trucker here. Okay. Diesel fuel can catch fire and is classified as a flammable liquid, according to OSHA, because of the flash point above 199.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. It's got to be really hot. The flash point of diesel is approximately 140. Okay. 
All right, so, I mean, I, I just don't think a bullet's going to make a, 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 a diesel tank blow up. Maybe a gas tank. But they're lead-lined. No spark. I could be wrong. So, so going back to this, the conclusion of this is this. And this, this is true. we got to say this. It, a lot of people go into that, and I'm one of them. As soon as you hear it, you're like, well, who started it? Whose fault was it? Who the hell started this thing, man? Maybe it's the trucker. Maybe it's the four-wheeler. But guess what? It doesn't matter. Doesn't. What, what, it, there's, if, there, if you get to the point where a gun is pulled out, you're in the wrong, okay? Because first off, you know, <laughs> there's, there's no need ever for a gun to be pulled out if... In, if if some I'm just saying if somebody cut you off for example maybe the maybe the truck driver cut him off okay and maybe the guy caught his old lady in bed with somebody that morning I don't know but the bottom line is there's no need to pull a gun out Ruthann what do you think there's never a reason to pull a gun out while you're while you're angry like that you know what the bottom line is you have a set of brakes okay if a trucker cuts you off and again I'm not saying the trucker was at fault I'm just using this as if this is why the guy justified pulling a gun out, well, the big bad truck almost killed me, you know, so I decided to shoot him. But you know what? All you had to do is stop and let the trucker go down the road if if that is the case. So if you're a four-wheeler out there today and you have an anger issue, I mean, sincerely, especially if you're in your 50s and you know time is just about up for you because you're about to be considered an old fogey. <laughs> <laughs> just What? In my analogy, yeah. if if you got a chip on the on your shoulders and you're mad at the world and a trucker cuts you off, don't pull your gun out because guess what, you're going to jail. You are going to probably go to prison for a little time too. You cannot discharge. You cannot discharge your gun for any other reason except that your life is in danger and someone's trying to kill you. And I could guarantee you, if you went to court and you sat down and you said, "Well, the trucker was trying to run me over," the judge is going to say, "All you had to do is stop." He can't stop. You should have just stopped and let him go down the road. Get stop. Slow down. Let him go. And that's really what the bottom line is. Ruth, then you really look like you're into what you're reading. I, I'm. St- you're still trying to find his diesel combustible with a bullet? Actually, it said it's more combustible than it is flammable. And the one, uh, the one diesel mechanic had said, so... Oh, okay. We're going to take a mechanic now. A grease monkey's opinion. Come on. They work with it constantly. Okay. But that he said that it, it's... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to keep arguing over it because, you know... I'm, not I'm sure it will. Uh, um, someone will end up researching it, so... Drivers, I know one of you right now are honestly trying to look and see. Shoot me a message and let me know what you come up with. Is diesel flammable or combustible if you shoot into the tank with a gun? Okay, I'm going to move on because I didn't even see this story just popped up. Listen to this. Truckers excessively reckless driving attributed to swallowing meth. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. A trucker's reckless driving was caught on camera in Oklahoma on Wednesday, and police say the erratic behavior can likely be attributed to methamphetamine. The incident happened on Wednesday, but police did not release the information until Thursday. According to uh, Oklahoma News 4, a motorist was driving along the Turner Turnpike in Oklahoma when he encountered a semi-truck swerving, running other trucks off the road, and, sta- uh, and straddling lanes, the motorist then contacted police and began filming the erratic behavior. The video began somewhere near Tulsa and ends in Stroud. 45 minutes of this. It says uh, the truck driver Gilberto Ortiz can be seen weaving between lanes, straddling lanes, and generally driving in a dangerous manner. What the hell is this? It started in Tulsa. He was trying to run people off the road in Tulsa. He almost hit like three other trucks. This is just quotes from the people. Bottom line is they're blaming it on the the, uh, the meth he was doing. Here's the video. Want to see it? I'm going to play it. Wow. Oh, yeah, the cops are trying to. Oh, yeah, he's pretty pretty tough. Wow, look at that. You guys can see that whole video on CDL Life, and you can see that story on CDL Life. What do you think of a driver, then? That does so. I've never done meth. Have you? No. Never. So, what would would meth make you want to drive crazy? 
I think any drug can make you messed up enough, depending on what your chemical compound is. But isn't meth a speed? I think it is. Yeah, I think it's a, it's like a speed. It's. I mean, why would it make you? Unless he just had a bad reaction, or he just can't handle his meth. I, I honestly, I'm I'm not one that could really give much analogy. I can tell you this: um, on some people, if they drink caffeinated stuff like uh, coffee or take like Benadryl. It's the reverse reactions. Benadryl, instead of making people tired, can actually make them hyper. The same with coffee. Instead of making someone hyper, it can actually calm them down. Depends on your chemical makeup. You know, I'm going to accept that answer. Okay, thank you. I'm not even going to tell you to Google it. Okay, good. You know what? We're actually cranking up time here. Okay. You got a... uh a word genius for us. Didn't you say you had a joke earlier? <laughs> I did have a joke. Yeah? Yeah. Why don't you bring it up? Why Is it a trucker joke? No. Wait. No? No, it's not a trucker joke. Is it any good? I think it was funny. All right. Go ahead. Why are frogs always so happy? Mm, I don't know. Because they eat whatever bugs them. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was funny. <laughs> do, you, do you have a? Uh, you have the word of the day. For us? I do. <laughs> From Word Genius, guys. If you're seriously looking to get smarter, and this is really not one of our sponsors, we just plug them all the time because Ruth Ann's getting smarter. It's called Word Genius. You go onto their website. You don't have to sign up or nothing, do you, Ruth Ann? Um, you, you give them your email. So you do sign up per se, So, but that's oh, it. Give them your email, and then they email you the word of the day, mm-hmm. and uh, you learn new words. And we're about to hear one, right? And if you have done that, let me know. Let me know that you yeah. are. No. Write to us. Yes. Ready? Eek. E- eek. <laughs> that isn't the same eek like as in eek a mouse. This is E-K-E. Oh, eek no, it's pronounced E E K, but it's E K E. That's a, it's, I hate words like that. That's like island. It's really Island. Eka. No, eek. What's what's the definition? Eek. What's the definition? Make an amount or supply of something last longer by using or consuming it frugally. Say it again. Make an amount or supply of something last longer. By using or consuming it frugally, okay. manage to support oneself or make a living with difficulty. So, give me eek in a sentence because I'm trying to figure out how the hell can you use that word in a sentence that makes you be very sparingly on something to make it last longer. Oh, you, as soon as I say it, you're going to say, Oh, yeah. Go ahead, sit here. All right. The farm only eked out a bushel of produce after the major freeze. The committee managed to eke out a bare bones draft by the deadline. See the one word you put the ed on there, eked. Is that e e k a no. apostrophe e d eked? E k e d. It's like text and texted. <laughs> yeah. Did everybody notice that? It's really hard to say that text or texted. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So eek, eek right. or eked. All right, all right, Ruth, then we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.